through the powerful partnership of two visionaries, the Cathedral of St. Paul, Minnesota achieved awe-inspiring scale and beauty. This is the story of its rise. John Ireland left his home of Ireland as a boy in 1848 during the horrific potato famine, finding a new home in St. Paul, Minnesota. From these origins, Ireland ascended the ranks of the Catholic Church to become the influential Archbishop of St. Paul. Archbishop Ireland was an impressive figure in his era, having intelligence and energy. He advocated that the American Church must be in close contact with the world in order to win the age. With challenges like racial prejudice and the growing needs in industrial cities, Ireland fervently promoted the humanitarian outreach of the church, founding charities, schools, and hospitals. While initially uninterested in building a new cathedral, the swell of immigration brought on the pressing need for one. The existing cathedral couldn't even physically contain the gathering for Holy Week services. So in 1904, Archbishop Ireland announced the construction of a new cathedral. Having committed to the project, Ireland soon concluded that the new edifice should be monumental enough to represent the centrality of the church's ministry in the life of the modern city. Initially planning to select an architect through a design competition, after meeting Emmanuel Louis Masqueray, Ireland knew that he had found his architect. Born and raised in France, Masqueray had studied architecture at the renowned École des Beaux-Arts and rose to fame as chief designer of the St. Louis World's Fair. Seeing Masqueray's reverence and fervor for creating a great church for the region, Ireland called off the competition. Masqueray promptly embarked on a four-month tour of France looking for design ideas and sketching out an ambitious vision for the Cathedral of St. Paul. Upon Masqueray's return, the building committee immediately approved his design. It was an enormous Greek cross layout in a Beaux-Arts style. His design was so large that the diocese had to purchase additional property and get permission to move a road to make room. Masqueray selected Rockville granite which sparkled in the sunlight, enhancing the grandeur of the Beaux-Arts design. A project of this size came with many challenges, especially financial hurdles, but under Archbishop Ireland's powerful leadership, every obstacle was dismantled and the building rose. It was Ireland's conviction that as civilization rapidly grew in America, it was vital that the church promote spiritual and moral strength within society. The cathedral would be a highly visible symbol of this outreach. Its location atop Cathedral Hill boldly drew the attention of the city below. The front facade, featuring magnificent Renaissance-style sculptures that took craftsmen four years up on scaffolding to chisel, highlights the cathedral's missional nature. Sculptures of science and faith adorn the main entrance, showing the harmony of all knowledge under God. Above this shows Christ sending out the 12 apostles with the Latin inscription from the Great Commission to go and make disciples of all nations. In 1914, the exterior was completed and the old cathedral demolished. Culminating 10 years of hard work, 
An inaugural liturgy was held before a multitude of 2,500 people. Overwhelmed with emotion, Archbishop Ireland broke down and sobbed in front of them. The vision of masquerade in Ireland set the tone as later generations continued the work on the interior, which became a canvas for awe-inspiring statues, paintings, and stained glass, all rich in artistry and theology. The baldachin over the altar had delays in its production, but everyone forgave the delay once they saw the result. Six striking black and gold marble columns topped by Corinthian capitals, supporting a canopy and angels all cast in bronze. Behind the sanctuary, six chapels represent many of the nations that shaped St. Paul and feature statues of historic missionaries to each of the cultures. Known as the Shrines of Nations, this area celebrated ethnic diversity in an age of hostility to immigrants and honored the work God already did in their histories. The final result was magnificent. Most natives of Minnesota had never seen the great cathedrals of Europe, but this cathedral showcased the finest level of ecclesiastical architecture. Sitting unobstructed before St. Paul, the cathedral continues Archbishop Ireland's intention of bringing beauty and hope to the city.